Hi, hello, and welcome to the Revolving Door series brought to you by Vertex of Abundance. My name is Serene Priestess of Pelosi. I'll be your oracle today. If anything resonates deeply with you, go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a review, book a session, send a donation. And as always, Vertex of Abundance is the way you have other viewing options. So thank you for making us one of yours. So this is going to be for, I was sent to deliberate the findings for the karmic aspect of whatever sacred union, divine partnership that we're supposed to be in. Sometimes it's with the Lord. Sometimes it manifests into the physical through a member of the soul group, but that's only if we're already in spiritual union. Okay. So I'm seeing some changes here. We enter into this cycle, having made some changes, really. There was a bubble that burst or some kind of cleansing, clearing, flushing, purging with this five of cups here. Now it is positive, but there was some kind of aha moment, but it does also mean that our good karma was coming through. So there might've been a reason to not continue with a person, place, or thing. Because it was blocking our spirit karma life path destiny. It was getting in the way of our calling on our life. There's some restrictions here. This is in the spot of sacrifice to be made. So we did have to kind of swap something out or switch something up. And it was about taking action, which is what we're doing because we have the truth. And that's, it's, a, it's according to our spirit karma life path. Destiny. Now somebody here may have their, ma, um, okay, I just said Mars for some reason. Well, we do have Mars and Capricorn here, but or Scorpio, but it, it's not confirmed. I shouldn't be saying that. I was gonna say Mercury in Aquarius, and this is very, very confirmed. Um, this is Mercury in an air sign. This is Mercury, and we have Aquarius here. Also, somebody here could be a Leo sun, to be honest, but actually it's more along the line of Leo midheaven, which would make a Scorpio rising probably has Mars on the first house cusp of Scorpio. Cause that's what I'm really getting. There's also a lot of 11th house energy here. So we're coming into this cycle with some kind of change made. It was a union. It doesn't have to be filial or congenial. It, it ultimately, the evolving situation that the truth came out externally or in the extroverted energy, which is typically masculine, is not always about a male bodied person. It's just the energy that could be seen or measured or. There was some kind of collaboration. I feel like it's with the Lord, some kind of unity and assignment, essentially. Three of Pentacles. And we enter that calling. But it, it gave us some rule regulation restrictions. So there might be something that we need to be restrained. Um, honestly, there was some tending to. And the two of pentacles with the judgment card means like, hey, that's doing what the Lord tells you, number one. And number two, it's returning to the sophic path, that white light there, instead of getting out of that dark light. And this is about flushing, purging, getting rid of stank energies, even like smudging the house. And so we had to answer some kind of truth, take action according to some type of truth or edict from the divine. It does happen here. 
So going on into the evolved situation, Yeah, once we have that truth, we start navigating, negotiating, we start trying to manifest out of that. And it does align things. Energy gets moving in a way that it needs to be. Because I think we needed to focus on something that was alive in ourself and we would have came to some kind of truth. Um, Ace of Cups with the Four of Cups, you need to be in a union with, we need to be in a union with ourselves, a spiritual union first, and it'll anchor into the physical. Because some energy got unlocked, unblocked, and it came from a disappointment, Five of Cups. That could be mourning, could be grieving, could be remorse. It also can be a bubble bursting, Five of Cups. It also, it could be a lot of other things. And let's just go back for a quick second. Five of Cups can give a negative, any five can give a negative connotation to certain things. So four of cups in reverse means happiness is stunted, but it also means the renewal of happiness. And it, it, it could also mean that we were desiring a separation. It could also mean could the, you know, we were wanting to purge, to separate. And it happened, and then love started to come back, and I don't actually feel it's from the same person. Things got moving again. We were kind of stuck or stagnant, and things got moving again. So now we have options or franchise control. And that's what was supposed to happen. Things are moving into alignment. And you have the both judgment cards, earthly judgment and celestial judgment. And guess what? It gave us a, a new beginning. It brought and restored peace because it, it means new healing, new temperance. And it was that we came out of some karmic situation with this um, devil card here. Now, somebody has their Mercury in Sagittarius, their Mars in Capricorn, but also somebody here is a Capricorn sun or an Aries rising, for sure Aries rising. Because we're desiring to, to detach, to withdraw. That's what we want, to detach, withdraw, because we want to open up our heart. We couldn't with something that was before because there was some kind of um, uh, attachment more than a temptation, a vice that we had to get rid of. Somebody might have been a drug or something that a person was doing wasn't healthy for us. We need to break up, break free. Now there is some obsession here. So that might be a practice that we're letting go of, we're restraining ourselves. Sometimes we get a little too focused on a person and that's because they become our God. Love brings us close to that God energy and we're worshiping a person instead of worshiping the Lord. If we cannot serve the Lord with this person by our side, they're not our right person. They're not a kingdom spouse. They're not who we're assigned to. But there was a bad seed among others. So somebody might have looked, presented themselves great, but they weren't. That's the temperance and the devil card, a bad seed among others. It's like that one rotten apple spoils the whole bunch kind of energy. Because um, we were trying to work something through, work something out with the person, giving them our heart, and it wasn't the thing to do. We actually needed to move them out, let them put whatever blockages they were putting there and say, okay, I see who you are. I accept who you are. I don't have to tolerate it. I see who you are. There's nothing wrong with who you are. It doesn't work for me. I see how you move. There's nothing wrong with the way you move. I'm just going to move out your way. And we had to do that. And there is some kind of energy being projected at us. I'll be honest. There's an addiction. Somebody is addicted to us. Yeah, I'm addicted to you. I'm hooked on your love. It's like a powerful drug. I can't get enough. Yeah, so somebody is addicted to us. We have a triple eight. That's energy manipulation, energy projection, spiritual manipulation. They're trying to swap places with us, or switch things around. They might want our destiny. They might want our spot. This love can, you know, it, it can evict you from certain places that you need to be. It can take you off the path, distract you, make you miss your shot, miss your 
exit on the freeway. It can make you get up out of your spot, give up your spot, trick you out of your spot. Yes, yeah, like a powerful drug. I can't get enough of. Yeah. Um, trapped in your eyes, drowning in blue, out of control. Yeah, so that's obsession compulsion. Um, the Eight of Wands, I keep wanting to say the hangman. It's not the hangman, it's the. Eight of Wands, Fool, and the Devil, that's obsession compulsion, especially with the Two of Pentacles. It's an obsession compulsion, or the Seven of Cups, Eight of Cups with the Two of Pentacles could be obsession compulsion. And then you have the Devil here, it's compounded. So somebody actually doesn't want to work things out. They want it one sided, and they want us to kind of be stuck on their little stupid. What is this triple eight about? They don't want to work things out. They don't want to be fair. They don't want to be balanced. They don't want to be in alignment. This is self based on coming from somebody else. Yeah, so depressive, dependent, obsessive, extreme emotions, um, extreme emotions, escapist, spiteful. Yeah, so we I felt like we were getting away and they didn't want that. So they came kind of come came in trying to bind us in some kind of way. It didn't work. Could we read some type of healing and that was the surprise to them where we actually don't need them? We wanted them for some kind of while. And when we opened up our heart, it they showed that they were not just a highway for demons, but a source. They were hosting. And so all these boundaries went up and that was the thing to do. We had to rule, regulate, restrict. We had to have boundaries. That was the terms and conditions from the Lord or we were going to lose. Let's clarify that. Yeah, so we're in a rebuilding, but it, it did blow up somebody's little world. And we are being attacked externally, battles, arguments, unnecessary conflict. Somebody feels that their world is falling apart or we might feel like we have no options. That's because somebody's trying to bring chaos, confusion, and destruction to our life. They're trying to destroy us because we're inaccessible, unapproachable, unavailable, non-agreeable. And this is a person that's very, very troubled. Troubled childhood, very difficult time loving themselves and others. Um, they get into trouble in various ways, sometimes unnecessarily, and they're plagued by depression and addictions, as I was saying. Um, and they're juggling. They're unable to make decisions based on confused emotions. They have to deal with multiple obligations, maybe even multiple people. They have too much on their plate. They might be, you know, they might have a bunch of voices in their head. It's not always schizoid type of thing. I don't mean to diagnose it. It can just be too many people, too many cooks in the kitchen, too many outside parties trying to bear, you know, lord over, preside over, speak over their life. They can be ruminating, oscillating, vacillating, marinating in hate. So they always have things that come up that, that bother them and they're, they're, they're harboring resentment or something of that nature. So we needed to see things from a different perspective because we were stuck. If we keep going back, which I'm not seeing, but we were stuck in a hard place. We needed to do the hard thing. We needed to take a very hard decision and it wasn't going to be pleasant. It was going to break our heart. It was going to bring pain. But sometimes the wound is where the light shines through. Pain returns it to the path because austerity cleanses. Suffering purifies. Conflict breach chains. Adversity is the catalyst for success. So we were getting distracted, maybe even stuck on stupid. And we needed to return to the path. So now we, we, that we were wanting to detach. 
And it was difficult, but it happened. It wasn't easy, but we did it because they wanted, they were after something that we, we had, maybe our celestial endowment, maybe our spiritual inheritance. They were trying to take away either our power or bring tyranny, destruction, dominance over our lives. And once we finally saw that, the kingdom of heaven led us back. Our ancestors really, with the lover's card, our ancestors led us back in. That could be union, communion, unity. Okay, hold on. Union, community, partnerships. Whew. But channel's going really fast. So we were left to suffer a little bit by our ancestors so that we wouldn't mess up the legacy on our life, so that we would come into alignment with our destiny. And we suffered a little bit because we needed to see things from a different perspective. Okay, because evil seeds were planted and we could have transmuted them or we could have, you know, whatever happened, it could have made us bitter or it could have made us better. And so we decided to get better and somebody else decided to get bitter. We have a triple, a double three here. So there was some kind of collaboration cooperation, co-creation, or it could have been a click coven, a cabal. Now somebody here might have Saturn in the seventh house. So when that person, if they're, they're supposed to be really great, some people use their gifts so strongly they become their weakness. In that case, this person can have had so much go on early in their life that they kind of fizzled out because they stopped doing their work. Those types of people with Saturn in the seventh house that are not in their right energy, they could become like a god to others or they could become dominating as well. Meaning if we're unhealed, we'll worship them as our Lord instead of having the Lord and them help us serve the Lord. Um, the man is on the plan, he should never get in the way of your spiritual commitment. Whatever you place before God, whatever you place before your spiritual practice, you will lose. Eventually, you will lose. It'll start with like things disappearing in your life, like your car or your money, and then your health, and then you're done. Your whole life gets wiped out, and you're left with nothing so that you'll eventually reach your hand out and beg for the Lord to return. The other thing with the Saturn in the seventh house for an uh, unhealthy, unhealed person is that, whether it's us or them, is that um, they'll think they're better than everybody else and we'll start to worship them. So they can become dire, domineering like a tyrant. They can have absolute authority because we gave it to them. Because we do need to see things from a different perspective. And it's gonna, it might come through losses, surrender, sacrifices, a hard time. Three or so or seven of pentacles. That is like slowly but surely things get more difficult. Things get more caught up until we learn, we recognize and see this is a windfall. Will of fortune with the death card, that's a windfall. So it's luck and unluck, fortune and in misfortune. And um, somebody definitely does have their is a Scorpio rising with Saturn in the seventh house. Which would mean having Saturn in Taurus. I don't know what the years those are because the, the new ones are pretty young. Yeah, it was driving me insane. I was addicted to you. I was hooked on your love. So we got out of that mess, whatever that was. And it was almost like our path was restricted until we decided to move forward with our desires, passions, and motivations, the calling on our life, really. And that was the thing that turned it all around. But this is actually two sides of the wheel here. Somebody's getting the bad shake of things and, and somebody else is getting the good shake of things. So we had to let some things go, call some things away. And we have that spiritual inheritance um, spiritual inheritance and celestial endowment is both here. So it's actually very positive on our end. 
it is a windfall. It's a spiritual inheritance, but it comes through letting somebody go. We had to let something die. And that was the cost in order to have this new life. And it was a connection to somebody. Tell me about this double 10. Yep, it was very difficult, but we had to let something go because we were being attacked and abused. Somebody was guilty of something. Yeah, it was just that we they were feeling entitled. We couldn't really mess with them because they were only bringing in darkness. They were like a dark cloud. They were using us to lift them up. We were supplied to somebody. That's what this is telling me. And this came right back, the five of pentacles. Yeah, our ancestors were not playing with this person. They were never, ever going to come in. We were not going to get what we needed until we let go of this person. Let me look. Yeah, I keep hearing that I'm addicted to you. I'm hooked on your love. It's like a powerful drug. I can't get enough of. Yeah. Um, trapped in your eyes. Drowning in blue. Yeah, but this person can't speak up. Can they, they can't speak their mind. And there is somebody in the periphery that wanted to come in that was that couldn't speak up for whatever reason. It's not just because they thought that we were attached, but they might get the courage to speak up now that they think that we're not attached. Or we might have had some kind of negative energy on us and they couldn't come in because there was an attachment that was kind of blocking them away. That nine of swords with the devil can be an attachment. But this other person had a mirroring nature too. So they weren't their authentic self. They were copycat. And they were a shapeshifter. And so we had to get space from that person or break free from some kind of attachment. It might have been a, an attachment onto us because I didn't see the four pentacles, I don't think. And it quieted down. So I said what it was. I don't even remember what I just said five seconds ago. So that was for you, baby. Um, that was for us priestesses watching. Um, wow. So we've got a most of it. I'm, I'm, we need the Empress and then we're done. We the Tempest of Lovers and the Emperor. So we need the Empress and we're done here. The devil came out already. So this is definitely a karmic connection. Somebody here might have a Scorpio sun, or they could be an Aquarius rising. I don't know how it all happened. Yeah, it happened suddenly. This person snuck in without knowing, without us knowing. If somebody has a Pisces midheaven, that would make them a Gemini rising. Somebody does have their Jupiter and Capricorn here, which is honestly, the, it, it, Jupiter and Capricorn needs to get a few very spiritual things out of the way before they leave the house as a child, or they might have a, a rest of their life moving into other people's spots and not their own. There's a lot of exceptions to that rule, but it normally talks about their dharma, how they came into this life. Because once they set in their ways, meaning adulthood, once their personality is kind of finite, it, it, it doesn't look good. They always champion other people's causes or move into other people's spots and never their own. Did. Those people tend to harbor, because it's karmic. A lot of Capricorn placements and Scorpio are karmic, not Mars for Capricorn or the rising, but like, like for instance, Capricorn moon, Capricorn Venus, that's very karmic. So Jupiter and Capricorn is almost like, if it doesn't talk about the work, it typically talks about a person that moves into other people's spots, they, they protect other people. So uh, Jupiter and Capricorn, the good thing for that would be 
you're like a keeper. Maybe you're like a museum curator or like a guardian, a portal keeper, or a, a temple keeper, a mystery keeper. Yeah, you might be an archivist. If that doesn't happen though, and you didn't come up in a religious family that was positive, it typically means like you're, you're steal from other people, you're envious, you're jealous of other people. I hate to say that, because that's like blanketing a whole, you know, so I'm giving you both sides of the coin, the benevolent and the malevolent of that. It's not normally not good. Very few things in Capricorn are good. That doesn't mean every person with Capricorn energy is bad. It just means like if you don't see it on their rising, if you don't see it on their Mars, it might be a karmic relationship usually. Mars, I mean, uh, Capricorn and um, Scorpio are the same. Like you don't want a Capricorn moon, you don't want a Capricorn, I mean, a Scorpio moon, unless, unless. So like, it's fine if you're a Capricorn moon and your moon is opposed and like uh, maybe Saturn is conjunct your moon or uh, it's fine if you are a Scorpio moon and it's opposed to your Saturn, you know, and, and it, there's more to the, it could be trying, it could be this, it could be that. I'm just saying like on both of the coin, the person involved with that Capricorn and the actual Capricorn. If you have Capricorn and Scorpio, you need to sit down and look at yourself karmically. Don't ever, for any reason, even if it is true, be like, things are happening to me. Take responsibility for every good, bad, and ugly thing in your life. It'll help you so much, believe it or not. And there's a lot of remedies, but I would need to know specific because if I, if I offer a remedy and you take it and it, it's, it's mitigated, it could actually do more harm astrological gym, all these things. It's like Scorpio, Capricorn, and Aquarius are the trickiest energies in the chart. Because there's so many little caveats. And for some reason, this is coming out because I'm getting a lot of Jupiter and Capricorn. It's like a whole story being told to me. And like, I don't want to say, oh, tis, tis, shame on you, because there's plenty of people that have some of those placements that are actually using it for good. But typically, when you see it, you need to look at them more scrutinizing. And it is actually saying that this whole reading has been saying like, there is some kind of astrological placement in the chart that is is making the whole life debilitated. And actually, I'll be honest, we are the ones coming up against this debilitated person. There was some kind of lesson that we kept learning through one energy. For instance, let me just tell you personally, I have dated multiple Capricorn moons. Funnily enough, Capricorn moon Scorpio risings, funnily enough. That, that means that their moon is in their third house. I have my moon in my third house, but I'm not a Capricorn moon. So it's funny that I've attracted like probably half a dozen, uh, maybe five, probably five or seven, you know, half a dozen, give or take one. I'm, I'm thinking right now, I'm counting even in the last, yeah, I can think of five at least right now. And I remember going back to my teenage years and I, I put in one of my lover's birth dates and it came up that they were a Capricorn when I just can't remember which one it was. So I know half a dozen. Like there's an experience here. Um, and I've read up on it and I remember when an Indian astrologer told me about it, it changed my life. Because it just means like there's karma that the universe is trying to get you to understand. There's the, like, especially like, like if you keep getting visited by Scorpio risings or um, Capricorn moons, this karma the universe is trying to work out. Now, listen, if you are this Scorpio rising, if you are this Capricorn moon and you know you're not a piece of shit, don't get there all huffy puffy, you know, squiggling in your seat, all angry, wanting to prove a point. Like, don't. 
because it means I'm right. Like, if you don't know yourself and can laugh when you hear things like that, you, you're still not understanding the assignment. There is a way to overcome any astrological placement. Normally, it's to go through your karma and to mature. There are a lot of signs that you don't want to mess with until they're mature. Virgo is one of them. Scorpio is another one of them. Um, Capricorn is another one of those. Once those signs mature, they're actually very safe to be around and you kind of want them. I wouldn't have anybody manage my assets that wasn't a Virgo or Capricorn. Whether it's a house, land, does that make sense? I wouldn't have anybody represent me that didn't have a Scorpio placement. Like I wouldn't send a messenger out or hire an attorney or or like if I was owned, if I was balling like that and I wanted to hire like a CEO to manage my business, I wouldn't unless you had Scorpio in your chart. You know what I mean? So like, but you better better believe I'm going to test you. Not even to your face. I'm going to go through my little assessments and ask you a series of questions. So just know this. It's coming through. And I don't know why. I feel like I've wasted forever on telling you that. But um, somebody has their Venus and Scorpio here too. Those are wicked people. Venus and Scorpio is wicked. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Now, the sex is great, I'll be honest. <laughs> um, the sex is a, 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 I'm out of this world. Um, they will F your soul. They will have sex with your soul. The thing about it is that they're wicked. These are the people that get those vendettas. That like, they, they dated you for two weeks and then they haunt you for the next five years. They, they terrorize you. Does that make sense? Because we're wrapping up some kind of karmic cycle. That's why I'm telling you this is our data is informing what the purpose of this is. We're wrapping up some type of karmic cycle and we're getting ready to move on. But because we're doing things the right way, we were going about it the wrong way for a while. We were guided by sight, not by faith. We were being disobedient to the Lord. We weren't following our intuition. We were stuck on stupid. We were attached. We was horny and lonely, something like that. And so all the red flags were being ignored. But that's over. We're taking some kind of stand now. We desire to be strong. We don't want to be weak. Is what I'm being told. Somebody definitely, definitely is a Pisces rising here. Yeah, we had to overcome. We were weak. We were hanging around garbage people. We weren't attracting those matured, healed ones. We were around the toxic ones. I'm sorry, five of pentacles, seven of cups. That's fives make everything reverse. So seven of cups means we had to get up and leave. It means that whatever was offered to us was a trap and we had to walk the seven of cups means everything that we were offered is an illusion seven of cups in reverse we we went through all of those and we learned the hard way what we did gain here was emotional strength pisces rising pisces sun mars and pisces gemini rising Once we learned the hard way, we gained emotional fortitude. We had to almost like turn over every rock, spill over every cup, taste every little candy in the, the assorted chocolate kind of deal. And we figured out, oh, there's three flavors in there we don't like, but to tell you the truth, this whole flavor, this whole little box of chocolate is made with gross chemicals and, and ingredients. And actually, if I just go to the chocolatier down the street and pay an extra 15 bucks, everything is better. So this BS that was offered me is 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 mentiroso, it's maricón, it's it's merde. Pinche, it's small, nothing. It's it's no que male, nothing. It's not good at all. That's what we have to be left here with, unimpressed. 
But for some reason, we needed to go through this whole thing because we needed to mature hermit card. We needed to go through a cycle where we started to rely on ourselves. Because we were always going to be around bottom of the barrel until we decided differently. That was this uh, awakening that we needed to have. To be honest, we needed to see that this is a double five. We were hanging out with losers. We're like a prin princess dating paupers. You know, um, double five losers. Broken, basic, boring, bottom of the barrel, common, petty. Could even talk about being poor, stuff like that. I don't usually say that in readings. But um, fives that can be a loss, depleted, debilitated, deformed. We have three fives here, so there was chaos. We were under attack, to be honest. With that seven of cups and now this tower card, it means we were being attacked. It was mirage, glamour magic. We were some kind of moth. I mean, we were some kind of flame that the moths would come to, and we didn't know better to say, eh, get away, scrub. It's not about being unfair or, or lacking kindness. If we don't know our worth, we're actually harming the other person as well, because they'll never be able to satisfy us, and we'll always have something negative to say towards them, even if we're that one of those people pleasers. Let's check on this double five here, this pair of fives. Tell me about the pair of fives Oop, from the other side. Yeah. So they were taking up the space of our twin flames. They were blocking. See, they were, they were taking up the space that wasn't for them. They were blocking something from coming in. We had multiple difficult differences with these other people. We kept moving through onto forgiveness, but they were materialistic and judgmental. And our twin flame was trying to come in and they were pretending to be our twin flame or they were blocking the space for our twin flame to come in. And these people were easily triggerable and they were just driven by ego and greed. Okay. And then we had sentimentality that seven of cups was on our side. So we kept going back and looking at people from the past. Yes. And, um, the universe had to put distance between us and it's not always physical distance. It could mean that we didn't have access to them anymore. And we needed to go through the heartache and heartbreak. Yeah, just bring in on the heartache. Yep. It was a perpetual no all the time. We couldn't do it. None of those people were right. None of those people were right. None of them, not a single one of them. We had a procession of bear, we had a procession of losers come out. We had a procession of fake ass poser pansy little pussies. I'm sorry, excuse me, but that we had a procession of them come out so that we could get again and 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 again. The universe had to whoop that ass. This is an ass whooping here. Yeah, I know. No, 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 the you know, was saying, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 none of those people were it. But something has happened. We finally learned some kind of lesson. Bringing on the heartache. Bring on the heartache. Yeah, okay. So we had to get our hearts broken. See, focus on the light. We weren't doing that before. This is what the universe wanted for us. I keep hearing thrink that, thrink that, thrink that. That's 30. A tremendous force of light is gathering around you. It is attracted to the purity of your intention to create from your heart. As your intention grows, so does the light. As the light grows, so does your intention. Magic wants to happen for you now. The synchronicity, perfect timing, opportunities, and information that are needed will seem to be drawn right to your door. You may start to feel as if you cannot walk outside without stumbling into something helpful, wondering and, and inspiring. You might be startled as the interplay of light with your heart evokes many new successes and attracts an abundance of opportunities your way. 
You may need to adjust as the field of light grows stronger and its effects become more palpable. It may bring rather dramatic improvements into your world. You may be uncomfortable or feel out of your depth with these changes. This would be understandable, but it would be a shame for you to hold on to the resistance for anything more than a brief moment. One more time. This would be understandable, but it would be a shame for you to hold on to that resistance for anything more than a brief moment. Any resistance of fear will inhabit you, will inhibit you from continuing free flow of light. Yeah. So that it can manifest its beauty through you in this physical world where it is needed. Yeah, so really light's coming in to our life, honestly. And there may be some kind of boring basic thinking. We're being asked to grow from the heart. It's a heart initiation, a heart activation, paid a knight of cups. And it's gonna shock us, it's gonna unravel us. It might even break some things down. Decrustation is what I'm hearing, so it's gonna, uh, shake up and break up a lot of things. Break up the makeup, that's all we do. Do you love me? Do you hate me? That's a game of rules. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. You keep breaking up with God when you let a man get in the way or, or men watching. Um, Whatever you place before the Lord. See, our spiritual union is with the divine and they will anchor into the physical to remember the soul group, but we need to be in the right spot. La da 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 Yeah. Um, Break up to make up that's all we do. Um, yeah, that's coming through. I know I was thinking, okay, that um, part of me, that could be pretty gross for some people with the ear. Do you love me? Do you hate me? That's a game. Oh, that's just coming through big time. Yeah, because the queen of wands with the five of wands means needing to repel certain energies away it means to get that vibration higher so that certain things can't come through and then you have it again queen of swords with the five of swords that means needing boundaries the queens are your needs the kings are your wants the pages are your feelings the knights are your desires yeah so we're also needing discernment we're not just needing boundaries we're needing discernment That's what this is saying. So um, you see the Empress is the last card we were waiting for and it's the very last card. So the Divine Feminine comes out late. Oh, wrong day. Okay, let's see what these evil elements are because I'm, I'm, I'm picking up on some nasty. I'm getting a Destiny song. Nasty, put some clothes on the told you. Don't walk out your house without no clothes on it, don't you? Yeah, so this card here, who? It, it's the man of a thousand years. So it would mean that we have to go through the primordial experience of the, the nasty before the good can come through. It also does mean that we kind of start as a small, unawakened human and we do get to be this very wise at the end. But with this thought to Hootie card here, it would mean that we're supposed to be balanced and impartial and we were lacking that for a while. Until we learned to be balanced and impartial, it wasn't gonna happen for us with supporting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, we did have to go through many deaths and, trans and transformations because we needed to live a righteous life and we weren't for a while. We kept putting up with the BS, trying to make it work and it wasn't gonna work. Um, but now we're sitting on a yes, we're sitting on a blessing with this Amun-Ra because we something got out of the way. 
Yeah, that was the message. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve. Thank you for allowing me the privilege to do so. If anything that I said resonates deeply with you, go ahead and like, comment, share, subscribe, leave a review, book a session, send a donation. See you in the next one. Bye, darling.